I think uh, you all people have the basic idea of DC machines. DC machines. So now we are about to measure the various resistances of DC machine. When there is a word resistance comes in DC machine, we should mainly focus on winding resistances and insulation resistances. So in our present experiment, we are measuring those resistance values. Means uh, already a machine is there in your exp uh, in your lab, and you are about to measure these winding resistances and insulation resistances. Coming to the coming to this session, I am explaining the theory and also the experimentation. Moreover, I have already provided you the videos related to all these things. So I want to cover the things what I have discussed in the videos. Means already. Uh, I have provided. I think you all people have seen that also. So I am explaining what is the matter in that, so that you can pe you people easily catch what is there in in overall uh, uh, in this experiment. Okay, coming to the uh, winding resistance, there are two resistances in winding. You can say armature winding resistance and field winding resistance. Coming to the insulation resistances. There is armature winding to yoke resistance and field winding to yoke resistance. You don't worry. I will uh, show you these four things clearly in the diagram. Okay. So, okay, we are doing the resistance measurement. So, why we should measure the resistance? The question comes because we are doing the experiment. We are measuring measuring the resistances. Why we should uh, measure the resistance? First point. to find the performance of dc machine the thing is that in dc machine in dc machine if you want to know the performance we should calculate the efficiency so for calculating efficiency what are the main things we focus on means if if you are giving some input there is an output so if you want to calculate the efficiency you should know the losses means you are giving a input to the system in system what are the losses happening and how much output we are getting so this itself gives the efficiency so for finding the performance of dc machine we should need armature copper loss and field copper loss so armature copper loss is nothing but i square into ra where you can see ra it is nothing but armature resistance same in case of field copper loss there is a factor rf you can see means v square by rf field copper loss where rf is the field resistance so we can clearly see here that for finding efficiency these two are needed and also this this itself proves that for finding the performance of the machine these two should be measured for troubleshooting see normally insulation resistance uh, we normally measure when we are installing in a lab because in lab let us assume we are operating our lab at 110 volt means let us assume because uh, normally we are doing our experiments also 110 volt so i am uh, on the basis itself i am saying okay uh, if you are operating our lab at 110 volt days so uh, there is a insulation we are keeping between armature winding to yoke and field winding to yoke so normally and there is a uh, means initially what happens uh, the dc machine is designed to operate at a specific voltage okay you can't operate the design 1.1 volts uh, machine for 200 volts because if you operate for more voltages the insulation resistance what you are taking here it will be broken means insulation not, uh, normally we say insulation material we we come across a term dielectric So dielectricity. So this will be broken. So uh, the thing is that normally we are measuring the insulation resistance initially before installing in a lab because we are buying a machine. We are installing the lab, but maybe the vendor who is selling uh, that machine maybe has given the wrong uh, 
machine for us because if it is 110 volts he might have given 50 volts who knows so we should measure the initial uh, insulation resistance and we should say that okay it is uh, capable to operating in our atmosphere means lab atmosphere so for those things we should need the uh, insulation resistance value so this is the overall thing why we need the resistance measurement so coming to the pictorial representation of armature and field winding okay i i will show you how it looks like okay uh, i think it is visible uh, see this is a field winding what you see this is a rotor rotor and it is a armature winding armature winding he didn't given the representation correctly so i will uh, show in the next picture okay this uh, this thing this whole thing is in the center of this field winding because uh, it is like uh, uh, i then um, it is like it means rotor is rotating and at that time commutator itself generate the current and it will be induced it will be induced into this rod which you saw, see here so i will show you the individual pictures that is far better so this is the field winding normally what we see in the real time this is the field winding completely it is like a circular you can uh, observe here in in center we have that armature okay so this hey, is sir uh, sir uh, some of our friend are still trying to join sir can you please allow, allow them sir okay 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 this is the uh, okay uh, this is the field winding in the real time uh, lab uh, scenario you can see like this and uh, there is an armature okay this okay this is the armature and also we can see there is iron core coil insulation these all things you don't need we basically because uh, as you are from csc background i can explain uh, this but there is no lot of you so i am just going with the flow okay this is the armature and inside there is armature winding and you can see the major important parts here are commutator you can see here commutator this is for uh, inducing the uh, electricity into the uh, into the system okay so coming to the ranges of resistances okay see we have armature and also uh, field winding and also insulation resistance so we should know the ranges first means what are the different ranges of resistance see if you see armature winding resistance its value is around 1 ohm means it is low range means uh, normally resistances are three types low range medium range and high range resistances so coming to the first one armature winding resistance it is around 1 ohm naturally for any machine it is around 1 ohm so it is a, you can say it is low range resistance coming to the field winding resistance its value is around 140 to 150 see i didn't put one see normally it is 140 to See 140 to 150 ohm. So it is under medium range. Coming to the winding insulation resistance, it is in the range of kilo ohm. Means it is almost 10 cube into means 10 cube multiple. So it is high resistance range. So in order to measure the DC, see in order to measure the DC uh, overall resistance of the machine. In order to measure the overall resistance of the machine. We should know the ranges first because see we can't use uh, a same meter for measuring uh, resistance for everything because we have specific meters means we have a specific method for measuring the resistance. So we should first know okay armature resistance means it is in the range of 1 ohm. Field winding resistance means it is in the range of 140 to 150 ohm. 
and binding insulation resistance is the range of kilo ohm so based on this uh, values of resistances we have different method okay for low and medium range resistances means for armature and field winding resistances how we measure see here different methods are there first one is kelvin bridge method second one is ohm meter multimeter method third one is ammeter voltmeter method see we have three methods then uh, on which basis we should go means which method you should we should uh, use normally in our experiment we are going after ammeter voltmeter method because if you see other two methods they have their own disadvantages because if you come to uh, ohm meter and multimeter method there is a contact resistance means see while you are measuring low resistance i told you that it is in the range of 1 ohm okay if you measure that 1 ohm by using this ohm meter or multimeter method you can see there is a contact resistance of 0.4 to 0.6 ohm so uh, it will clearly show an error in the output because if you use these methods for measuring low resistance definitely there is an error because this is large error also because see it is almost 0.4 to 0.6 contact resistance so this is the major disadvantage with ohm meter and multimeter method coming to the kelvin double bridge method that this uh, contact resistance won't come into picture because uh, kelvin double bridge method is avoiding the contact resistance but the difficulty comes when we are placing the four arms of this kelvin bridge in the experimental setup because it is very difficult to make it uh, set up in the real time because if you go for a hardware case so if you want to set up this kelvin bridge there should be a proper uh, setup to implement this uh, kelvin double bridge so kelvin double bridge and home meter sir, multimeter sir. hello sir i have a question ha ah, tell me then say is the kelvin double bridge is equivalent to the wheatstone bridge Oh, see, see, the thing is that uh, let's class go on. Okay, I will, I will talk to you later. Otherwise, I will give you my mail or my personal member so that you can message because uh, this is a very uh, big assignment. There is almost four are there. Means uh, four experiments are there. So let this complete first. Okay. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, it is difficult to place uh, in the real time scenario. So these two we are not uh, focusing now. So we are focusing on ammeter and. Volt meter method. So for low and medium resistances in a lab scenario, we are using ammeter and volt meter method. Coming to the high range resistances, coming to the high range resistances, there are two methods: Magar method and volt meter method. So these both methods we are using for high range resistance measurement. So this is the whole thing means. Uh, what are the resistance in the uh, dc machine and uh, why we are measuring those and uh, what is the pictorial representation in the real time and uh, what are the different methods we are using uh, to find those resistance so this is the brief introduction of what we are doing in the lab so uh, i will explain the remaining thing with the videos what they provided because i will uh, pass it and explain like that because you people will easily understood because uh, as i provided all those videos and also Uh, the material to you so you can easily catch up what they said so i am now starting the lecture run okay let's go okay first of all see this is the armature resistance measurement see as i already told armature resistance measurement is in the range means armature resistance is in the range of 1 ohm so it is very less value so we are going after the voltmeter ammeter method so here you can see what we are using voltmeter one or uh, two voltmeter so you can see voltmeter 1 and voltmeter 2 and also an ammeter and we are uh, by using this voltmeter ammeter itself we are measuring the armature resistance value okay so in our lab experiment we have 110 volts dc and there is a load box you can observe here there is a load box so by using the load box we are varying means uh, we are varying different uh, loads here means we are inducing different types of resistance if you switch on this there is a one resistance if you switch on another uh, uh, another uh, parallel uh, string you can observe like this there is a different uh, strings of resistance so we are varying resistances here so by different switches so 
by controlling this load box we are inducing the current into the machine armature so normally for the pictorial case it is uh, uh, we are uh, it is a uh, 1d diagram so uh, we are uh, representing the machine like this means like a circle and also these are brushes so this is a simple representation in real time not only that see here uh, field winding is represented like this normally in real time field winding is around this motor okay so you don't confuse this is a pictorial representation for the lap work was or for exams or something okay uh, ammeter and voltmeter so here we are making an voltmeter across the motor see here brushes are there so we are placing an voltmeter across armature of the motor and all including the brushes okay this is the first point to be noted the another point we are placing an another voltmeter v2 across the armature itself so this is the arrangement we should do in the real time so what one is across the armature along with brushes and another voltmeter is only uh, across the armature so in this way we should do the uh, uh, what arrangement in the real time okay three parameters to be noted as already stated injected armature current by using the ammeter in the previous what i shown we should measure that injected armature current and we should measure the voltage drop across armature winding with and without brushes so because we are placing two voltmeters so we know we can get the values of the voltage with uh, and without brushes now we have uh, uh, meter voltmeter voltmeter but we don't know the ranges so how to uh, how to know the ranges of ammeter or voltmeter used in this experiment see normally we are using here what 110 volts dc so our load box in such a range that such that it can withhold that 100 110 volt dc because if it is not uh, withstanding that much voltage there is a chance that it may break down so we are using the load box in that range so you can see load box in the range of 110 volt and this 20 amps i will explain why they use 20 amps okay so okay coming to the ammeter we are saying that we are inducing the current into the armature of the machine so normally this machine rating is there means i will show you in the another video where the machine rating they clearly given that it is around 16 amps means 16 amps so 16 amps so our ammeter should be in the range of 16 amps so we take in the range 0 to 20 amps so one ammeter we take in 0 to 20 amps and load box around 110 volt 20 amps okay coming to the dc voltage this is a, a very good uh, question okay if you think see 60 amps is going on in this way okay we know that here, here we are measuring armature resistance so armature resistance value is around 1 ohm what i said so overall voltage using ohms law is nothing but v is equal to i into r so voltage is equal to current which is flowing 16 amps into resistance one means 16 volts and they didn't we are not including brush drops we are saying only about the armature uh, voltage drop so it is around 16 volts so here we are using 0 to 30 volts you can see is are 0 to 20 we can't according to our requirement we can use here we are having the availability of 30 volt uh, multimeter volt voltmeter so we are using here two quantity okay this is how we generally choose the range of uh, voltmeter ammeter and load box in the real time situation see coming to the experimental procedure it is better i will explain with the diagram itself see coming to the experimental procedure by using the load box we induce the current into the armature in the step wise means we are inducing uh, current like 2 amps first 0 amps 2 amps 4 amps 6 amps like that up to 16 amps okay while we are inducing the current into the machine we are measuring same time the voltage across the armature plus brushes and only the voltage across the armature so uh, for 
increase means for each load variation we are measuring the ammeter reading and voltmeter readings of these two okay this is the first point what they said okay the, then after after finding those voltages see this is the thing see it is better i will explain with this tabulation system see let us assume there is a load variation and we have a current i okay then also we are measuring with breast and without breast voltages v1 and v2 okay see with breast when you uh, when you uh, uh, when you measure the resistance it is the armature resistance with breast resistance you just uh, think uh, it, it is a good point basically and when you do without uh, breast you can see here armature resistance without breast means what if you want to know the actual armature resistance you should what you should do it is ra1 minus ra2 it will give you breast resistance okay only armature resistance is this but if you want to measure the breast resistance you can do like this means a total armature resistance with breast minus armature resistance without the breast it, it, it will give you the how much drop actually the breast is causing so this is the tabulation what we are doing for the first experiment okay so while doing the experiment one point should be noted see while we are doing this experiment see we are connecting the edges of the armature to the voltage so this what machine is there it shouldn't ro rotate because we are inducing the current but one should block this rotor otherwise what will happen if if this armature is rotating then this connections will be loose and you can't find the voltage across v2 exactly so this whole armature should be blocked such that it won't rotate and second most point the reading of these values a v1 and v2 should be taken very fastly because if you delay the time normally the heating in the machine will increase so it will lead to the means normally you know that there is a uh, formula of uh, resistance which is based on the temperature so normally if you are if the temperature is increasing the armature resistance also gets affected so you can't find the exact value of the resistance so it is better you should take the values of these all uh, voltages and uh, voltmeter and the ammeter values very fast so this is about the armature resistance calculation so coming to the field resistance so it is also a similar process but it is it is like in this one there is no need to block the rotor because we are measuring the voltage and current values across the field resistance so you can leave the uh, mod, uh, rotor as open means it can rotate also there is no issue with uh, measuring this a uh, voltmeter and uh, ammeter values so here it is a, there is a voltage dividend you can see you can observe here there is a voltage dividend which is giving means we are controlling the voltage across the field vane means we are controlling the excitation for the field vane so here we are having 1 110 volts dc and we are having a uh, variator so we are varying this so that the voltage across uh, the voltage across this uh, uh, field winding will vary and uh, we are varying the voltage in a range of steps of 10 volts means we are doing from 0 10 20 30 and up to 110 volts at the same time we are measuring the ammeter and voltmeter values and these two values are used for the in measuring the field resistance is same thing excited voltage and developed field current what is developed in that it is the same process so coming to the uh, range of values what we are taking here first one we are using the 10 volt and volt so normally the range of uh, voltmeter should be in the range of 0 to 150 volts one point is completed after that we are using a rheostat of 100 ohms and 3 ampere because normally what i what i said the current range can be low so we are give, going after the ampere then what about the ammeter range see since we have the dc voltmeter of 150 and the rheostat of 100 and also we know 
that are the field resistance in the range of 140 to 150. So normally we can take 0 to 2 amps because 150 by 150 means 1 amp. So we can take in between means 0 to 2 amps. Since we are uh, requiring, requiring quantity is what? M meter 1 and volt meter 1 and real start of 1 quantity. So this, uh, this is the thing what uh, they have mentioned here. So all things I explained using the rear start, uh, we should exit the voltage in the steps of 10 volts and we should take the recording of all the values. And uh, every step we should note down the voltage values and the current values. And uh, uh, we should use the Ohm's law for calculating the field resistance. Okay, this is the whole experimental procedure. See, same thing, voltage, and uh, after finding all these values, see, different, uh, at different voltage and the field current, we can find different uh, field resistance values. So, these all resistance values should be made average, means uh, if it is uh, 4 and 5, so the average is 4.5 like that, okay, we should do like that. Uh, we should average the whole value and we should uh, place it here. Sir, so so can you quickly uh, repeat the uh, field resistance that I actually got disconnected already? So, can you just quickly repeat that one? Okay, the field resistance, okay. Yes, sir. Only the field resistance. Uh, yes, okay. sir. Uh, okay, see, the thing is that uh, this is the field winding what we have. Okay, uh, see, normally in the previous method where we are calculating armature uh, resistance, we are blocking it because we are not uh, allowing it to move because we are measuring the voltage across this armature. So in this case, there is no need that it shouldn't be blocked. So it can uh, left it free. We can leave left it free. And coming to here, we are having a emitter, a voltmeter, which is uh, connected across, uh, voltmeter is connected across field winding and there is an emitter, which is uh, connecting uh, to the field winding through a variable. You can see a variable. It is a rheostat. You can say you can say it rheostat also or variac also. And we are applying a 110 volts DC, which is uh, available in our lab. And we are applying uh, by using this variac. We are applying different voltages. Normally in field winding, the voltages come in picture because here uh, in field winding, if you want to excite it, you should give voltage. Okay, you should remember that point. So by using a variac. We are varying the 110 volts in the steps of 10 volts, means 0, 10, 20, 30, like that, up to 110 volts. And we are measuring the voltage and current value. This is the only point. See, if you, if, uh, after measuring voltage and current values for different voltage, uh, low voltage input, we measure uh, the resistance by using Ohm's law. Means, see here. See, let us consider, see, first one, uh, serial number, instead of that, I will say, first range is 10 volts, you say. Now, uh, if the, uh, if our uh, voltage across winding is something like 2, uh, 2 volts, and if it is 1 amp, so we get our field uh, resistance as 2, uh, 2 by 1, means it is 2 volts. So, for the second one, means uh, now it is 20 volts. So, different types of voltages of input, we will get different uh, values of voltage and I. See, in this way, we are... Uh, we are we are tabulating the data and we are measuring the average value of field resistance. This is the what we are doing in this experiment. It is very simple. Means compared to armature, it is easier because uh, we are there is no need to block the rotor and there is no need to do the experiment also in a quick manner like that. Uh, no, uh, what we can say, no problems are there in this experiment. It is very simple. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Sir, uh, sir okay. can you please repeat the sir previous part? Uh, just tell me which part, which part exactly. Hello? Uh, see, tell me, tell me what? Sir, the previous part. Uh, armature resistance. Uh, no, sir, after that, I guess. Uh, means armature resistance calculation. You are saying that? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Let's uh, wait. Okay. This one only you are asking, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This one. Uh, okay, okay. See, uh, there we are varying. Means already, I, I think uh, you all people understand what is there in the field resistance. So I am not uh, telling that in field resistance. Normally, what we are varying, we are varying voltage. 
in armature resistance case we are varying current that is the only difference okay here uh, there is a motor is there see you you are blocking it because see now, uh, already you are calculating a voltage across armature leaving the brushes so if this motor itself moving then uh, the connections across this also will become loose and you can't find the values also uh, uh, across the armature so what you are doing you are blocking it at the first step and also you are uh, you, you should do the experiment in a fast manner means all the ammeter voltmeter values you should take within a span of maybe 10 minutes or 5 minutes not more than that because if you do this experiment for more time this motor get heat stop and we can't get the exact values of armature resistance so we should do it in a uh, faster time and also at the same time we should block the rotor this is the first precaution before doing this experiment okay coming to the main experimentation see we are having the 1 volt 120 volt dc here so let us assume here two ohms are there here two ohms are there okay first when we switch on this two ohms will come into picture and according to that there is a current and voltage induced in the system and also this uh, armature also we calculate all those values this voltmeter is nothing but voltage across armature including brushes see here brushes are which are which is the rectangular shape you can observe around the uh, around the armature this is nothing but brushes okay so we are calculating voltage drop across machine and we, along with brushes coming to this voltmeter we are neglecting the brushes so you can see wires are starting across only the armature so we are calculating voltage across the armature itself so this is the thing uh, we should also we should connect in real time also i will show you how they are okay so first okay, we connect uh, first we connect two ohm so with that two ohms we uh, we measure how much uh, uh, current is there how much voltage here and also here and if you close the another switch two ohms two ohms in parallel so when two resistances are in parallel the the overall resistance is half of the amount if they are same means two and two are there so it will be one ohm effective resistance so based on that we switch different resistances different switches like this and we get different resistance so this is the load back function load back functioning is this means when you switch on uh, one resistance it will come into picture you should remember that so by varying the load box you can get different resistances and different ammeter voltmeter values okay by noting all those values we are measuring what is the exact armature resistance of this machine okay i think you got that thing okay yes sir got it hello no okay okay uh, now so in fill resistance we instead of joining uh, the to uh, the voltmeter uh, with directly the armature we were joining with the uh, field coil sir right? ha ah, field coil is sir only field coil in a field coil we, we field coil it is like see in real time we we don't uh, take the field coil out only for experimentation case there is a two uh, points okay sorry to say okay i will explain once okay uh, those two points it is better i will go in the go in the instructions because in that one it is clearly there okay Uh, you will get to know what is the how you recognize it is field or armature see see this is a real time case see normally if you go to any electrical lab you can see their f1 f2 okay there is symbols on the board they resembles the field coil okay and also there is a a1 and a2 which resembles the armature coil these two what they actually do they take them out means normally in, these are only for experimentation case in real time you don't take the uh, them out and do like that so this is for experimental uh, case we are doing like means we are exciting with the different voltages when a machine is installed there is no need in real time to excite every time and check it we are doing it only for experimentation case means initially how to measure the resistance and everything okay so this is the uh, Uh, uh real time case you can say because in real time how the armature and field field coils are shown means you uh, the videos are there okay later i will explain clearly so that you can know okay if we go to any electrical lab how how to identify where, where the armature is across means it is across what a1 and a2 so these points they give separately and also field winding f1 and f2 they they are also separately given on the board you you have to use those points only okay you don't see that you don't see this structure again this structure won't come into picture only a1 a2 
या फोन ऐप सो यू जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस ओके ओके सर ओके सर नसुक सर ओके कमिंग टू द राम थ्री this is also a uh, insulation resistance measurement using voltmeter method okay this is uh, very simpler but uh, uh, you should be very cautious while doing in real time while i am saying this i will show you in the real time experimentation video because see this two point is see i am saying this it should be very clear because if you go to uh, if there is a chance that you should do hardware in the uh, offline then you feel difficulty if you don't understand this so you better uh, clearly note down the points after uh, what i said you can see this videos also same thing is there i am explaining you that's it okay see this point 2 is there it is nothing but a1 a2 for okay see this is uh, the second point is there which is nothing but it is a common point you can say means uh, if you want to find insulation resistance means see wait uh, let me show once okay the diagram it will be more clear okay see the round black black shape i think you all people can see na this is yoke okay yoke normally this rotor is inside itself okay it, it is dragged out to explain it in a precise manner but normally it, the rotor is also inside itself okay so the uh, if you want to calculate the insulation normal insulation insulation resistance we should connect the voltage voltmeter across yield winding and this yoke and if you want to uh, measure if you want to measure uh, the uh, what we can say the insulation resistance between armature and uh, uh, yoke you should connect the voltmeter across yoke and also the armature winding which diagram is more better okay let it be okay see this second point is nothing but it is the joint point between armature winding see what i say see here two points are there na a1 and d2 okay see we are measuring the insulation resistance between this armature to the yoke so these two points should be short circuited means this point this point 2 is nothing but Short circuited point of A1 and A2 for measuring the armature insulation resistance. For finding field insulation resistance, these two should be F1 and F2 common. You, you see here F1 and F2. Now we are joining these two ends. We are joining these two ends. In this case, we are joining A1 to A2. Okay. Why we are joining means we are measuring the insulation resistance between armature to the yoke and also we are finding the field uh, insulation resistance between field to the yoke so this is the thing you should remember okay the first uh, means it is a major point if you are going to lab you should say that uh, you are sorting a1 and a2 to measure the insulation resistance of the armature we are short circuiting field resistance to measure the field field sorry we are uh, short circuiting the field coil to measure the field insulation resistance so this is a simple uh, setup uh, for finding the insulation resistance between the armature to yoke and field to yoke okay this is rx is the unknown resistance let us say so uh, this is the voltmeter with a known internal resistance see in the real time there is a voltmeter available which is having some internal resistance see if you see one uh, voltmeter in a uh, 0 to 30 volts one voltmeter is there you don't know what is exact internal resistance is there in that because they don't mention but few voltmeters are there where they clearly mention that okay this voltmeter is having this much resistance so those kind, kind of, of voltmeter we are using here to measure the uh, resistance of the insulation resistance of the armature and also field so this is the input 110 volts dc and we are having a voltmeter with known resistance and we are a short circuit this is nothing but a short circuit line then this is the uh, exact rx means it is nothing but insulation resistance between armature to yoke or field to yoke okay this is the rx we denote it with the rx first case 
if you want to measure the supply voltage means you are giving supply voltage and you want to measure what is the supply voltage is there you should short circuit these two parts at that time what is the voltage uh, value in this voltmeter it will give the supply voltage because see if you short circuit this line this won't come into picture so it is nothing but a voltage source in parallel with a voltmeter so it will give the voltage value what is uh, given into the system and after that to finding the rx value we Im immediately shift this point to 2 okay after shifting this point to 2 see 110 volts and this is the voltage with internal resistance and a rx so this is the overall circuit we find okay see uh, it will be clearly uh, okay this is the thing what i am saying see this is the supply voltage this is the voltmeter and this is the rx here you can see there is internal resistance of rv because it is already known because while we are in the doing experimentation itself they will mention in our experimentation we are using a voltmeter which is having internal resistance of 50 kilo ohm so we are having the internal resistance of 50 kilo ohm you just remember i think you all people know how the voltage divides okay this is completely based on ohm's law and voltage dividend rule that's it see v2 is nothing but let us assume there is a current i is flowing in the circuit so v2 v2 is nothing but i into rv this is everybody knows because it is ohm's law simple ohm's law yet i is nothing but v by rv plus rx so this also no so after that if you want to measure the v2 v2 is equal to v1 into rv by because we are substituting i value in this equation so i is equal to v1 by rv plus rx we are substituting here so we get v2 is equal to v1 into rv by rv plus rx here our unknown term is rx so we are just making a simple mathematical substitution like that we are making rx is equal to rv into v1 by v2 minus 1 here v1 is supply voltage v2 is the voltage across the uh, voltmeter after connecting to the second point and uh, minus 1 you know okay here v1 uh, how we are calculating here we are calculating v1 by short circuiting the point to 1 because uh, initially there is no need of rx for calculating v1 v1 is nothing but supply voltage okay but for v2 we are doing this circuit and after that it will give some uh, voltage value and we are using here so by using by knowing the values of v1 v2 and rv we can measure the rx value like this okay this is how we measure the insulation resistance between armature to your and also uh, field winding to yoke. Same thing. See, uh, I just want to tell you this one, this first one, well, how we are measuring, we are short circuiting the voltmeter directly across source. This one, this voltmeter reading V2, we are measuring after connecting to the unknown rx value these two points only you should remember because for v1 there is no need that uh, uh, how to find because there is no confusion now okay see by using uh, after finding v1 and v2 we can directly find the rx value because rv is already known because i told you already that there is few voltmeters uh, whose internal uh, resistance is already known so those kind of voltmeters we are using so we can easily find the rx value Okay, this is the point, it is a major important point. See, while doing this experiment, you should remember that A1 and A2 to be shorted and F1 and F2 to be shorted. So, this thing you should remember the first point. This is also important, Why I will show you clearly in the video because now if I say also you don't understand this point. This one is clear, I think. Okay, A1, A2 to be shorted and F1 and F2 to be shorted. So, this is... Uh, voltmeter method and finally magar method see magar is also it is very simpler also see here what they are doing there is a two points e and l you can say it is rx what i said means insulation resistance okay insulation resistance okay see please give me Okay, 
He is the he we can say positive and the L is negative. Okay, you can say like that because for the real time it is better. You assume like that because there is no confusion. Okay, in this E point, we are just substituting A A one and A two, and that that line is given to E. Okay, he this L is nothing but this is the uh, point with the wire. This is the wire coming from the yoke. Okay. So by see in real time it is very easier. Okay, I will show you clearly. This handle is nothing but we are rotating it handlely so that uh, we can get the value of the uh, resistance. Here the line is between zero to infinity. This whole scale is between zero to infinity. If you rotate the handle, the value of the resistance will be displayed in this uh, meter. Okay. This is not that important. Okay. See, uh, after experimentation is done, okay, you have. I have already told you that first one, we are measuring the armature resistance and also field resistance and insulation resistance of armature to yoke and insulation resistance of yoke. Uh, this uh, what what we can say field to yoke. Okay. So after measuring all those, we should prepare a report. Okay, what we have done exactly. Okay, for these things, uh, already from the table data, what we have, this area one is nothing but this is the armature resistance, including the brush brush resistance. So this one should be means uh, we have to draw the graphs between area one with armature current and area two with armature current. And uh, these all things are not needed. First, basically, you should understand the fact that what we are actually doing. After that, these all things come into picture. Okay, I think uh, there is no need to explain this more. But you, you people, after after uh, the explanation is done, you just go through the video because it is not that bigger uh, a bigger thing that you can't understand because it is very simple. It is complete uh, uh, Ohm's law along with the voltage dividend formula. That's it. If you know volts, volts, uh, Ohm's law and the voltage uh, dividend rule. Then you can do these experiments uh, very easily. See, coming to the real time, what I showed you, okay, same thing, okay, it is not clear here, but you can see here points A one, A two, A one, A two like that, okay. Here these knots are nothing but A one, A two, and A one, A two. So. You can uh, directly uh, uh, what we can say. There is no confusion. If you go to real time scenario, there is no confusion that where is where we can see the armature winding and also field winding. So they clearly mention in this board. Okay. So so this is the thing. See, you can clearly see A1, A2, and A1, A2. Okay. A one, A two, and A one, A two. These things are uh, sometimes what they do. You can directly connect to the board. Okay, A one, A two, and A one, A two. See for this machine. This is the machine. What I am saying. This is the A one, A two, A one. See, we, this is called yoke. Means you can see upper part. See, it is covering the rotor and also armature. It is the upper part. It is called yoke. See, you can see here they remove the paint. Means I will show you. Uh, they are removing the paint. See, wait. This is the rating. What I told you. See, you can see here. What is the current rating? 60 amps. Okay. So based on these values only, you should take the you should take the ammeter and voltmeter values, and also you can see the rating also 2 kilowatt machine and RPM. These these are things you can see from the nameplate data. This is a meter. Okay, this is for first day, first day experiment. This is a voltmeter. Wow, how it looks like? See, this is the load box. What I told you. Okay, these are the different loads. You can see switch one, switch two, switch three. Uh, like the different switch. Uh, total six switches are there. See, you can switch uh, any switch. I uh, mean, if you switch the one amp switch, the current will be drawn according to that two amps, uh, three amps. Means uh, these are five amps. So you can switch on different loads by using this load box. For the first experiment, it's 
that are okay see this is the uh, overall experiment means if you go to lab what we see at the means the name plate details you should note it first be note down first because these are very important for doing any experiment you should know what are the name plate details because according to that only you you know is you you can uh, take the volt meter and ammeter me, uh, meter values and everything okay so you should know these values first so coming to the armature resistance calculation sir ah uh, hello sir someone uh, is facing some problem he wants to enter the class can you please admit him okay, okay uh, see um, Uh, for the armature resistance calculation what we said earlier we need a load box see he is, here he is connecting the load box see you just see the experiment i will explain in between see here he is using the nodes to connect those uh, uh, load box across the armature and also uh, the connections what is supply input supply this is the dc voltmeter means these these all can if you are real if you are doing in real time now it would have been more clear here we can explain it but this na not maybe 100% sure that you people getting what he is doing exactly see this is the supply okay normally this is the supply 1 to 1 110 volt dc supply and uh, he is connecting the load uh, load across it like that See, he is uh, he is just connecting the uh, armature armature one. You just see because he want to he, here he is just calculating the armature resistance now. So he is connecting the wires to the armature nodes. If you know how to connect that thing, na, then it will be more clearer. Even I say also. Okay, you people just go through this video because this video there is no major thing to say because he hasn't done anything special. Everything is connected according to the system. Okay. He is what he is doing here. You just tell me once. He is blocking the rotor. Okay. Because what I told earlier that uh, you should uh, do this experiment only after blocking the rotor because. If it is rotating, then uh, there is a chance that these wires comes out. What I am saying here, see these wires he connected across the voltmeter for measuring the brushes without brushes. This is that he is calculating the armature uh, voltage without brushes. So this line in the, uh, this wire is taken uh, before the brush. But uh, see if, if the rotor is rotating, see this wires he will come out easily. Even he connected, there is no chance that he will get the values correctly. So he is he will block the rotor also later. See, this is one ten volt DC directly given the supply. That is see. See, this is two points starter. Okay, what is showing now? Two points. Normally, nowadays three point starter is also came. Okay, this is two point starter. See, he is switching the loads. You can see here different switches are there. uh he can switch on the loads according to the means for taking different values we can switch different loads first one switch two switches three switches like that Mm. 
steel resistance also same process you will uh, see is the, it is a uh, rheostat uh, various you can say see this is the knot we control the resistance what we are applying to the system this is the knot uh, so uh, you can see uh, how 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 it is connected also because in real time you can see it clearly because uh, now i can't show means how it is it is at which position because normally rheostat can be in minimum and maximum position okay so according to our connection we can say that it is in minimum or maximum okay so okay. we are using this rheostat for varying the voltage to the field excitation you all people better see this video again okay if you have any doubts you can feel free to message me in the whatsapp or in my mail id i will provide later this is a ammeter means every every process is similar but in real time it is more suitable if we want to know he is okay this is a good point see, he he will vary the uh, point see different uh, ec voltage also varying because he is varying the resistance here you can make it minimum position or maximum position see here it went almost to 110 volts you can see insulation is somewhat interesting insulation resistance e this is a mega normally means mega in real time which is you can see from 0 to infinity the value it is very old so you can see it is 0 to 100 this is one point positive and negative as i already told we should consider one point as positive and one point as negative see what he actually do i am telling you here guys you just listen he is short circuiting a1 and a2 directly by using a wire and after that he is connecting this short circuit means these two are short circuit from that point he is connecting one wire to positive and one wire he will connect it to the upper side of the yoke by removing the pain see you just see i will show you see he shorted the line from positive to negative you can see here he shorted both the lines and from one of the node he given to the mega and other point he will ask because this experiment can be done by one person because one person should hold that thing at the above you can see one person holding that thing on the yoke see he is just moving it handling slowly and it's coming like this means it will show the measurement how the how, what is insulation resistance See for field resistance also same procedure. He will short down the both the upper and up to, and after that there is a wire given it to the positive node from that wire and RC. He is doing the same thing. The another one he will hold uh, on the upper side of the. See here paint is removed. You can see here I will show it. Okay, just wait. because that is also you should do because you can't directly play see here that area where they are putting that uh, wire you can see there is a paint removed because you can't put it on the paint because it won't give the exact value what you want it will give sparks also sometimes when the voltage uh, is increasing or if you are sensing something it will give sparks also on the surface sorry see how he removed that uh, thing that this thing i want to show he removes completely on that see this is a completely removed surface means you can't put ever uh, voltage meter across the uh, across the thing which is having pain because it will give you some uh, wrong value that see this is the voltmeter what i mentioned this internal value is already known this voltmeter has some internal resistance value that resistance value is 50 kilo ohm in our uh, laboratory we are having one voltmeter which is having 50 kilo ohm see it is 50 kilo ohm you can see 50000 ohm so uh, initial case this is very simple arrangement you can you can see once uh, if you are having any doubts you can ask me 
Not a thing. See here, these two wires are nothing but I will uh, explain you with the diagram. You just wait. See, these two nodes are there. You are short circuiting them to measure the voltage value, right? So same thing he is doing here. He is short circuiting those two to ca calculate the supply voltage. How much it came? It came around 110. Okay. So after that, what he will do? He will directly connect. You see, he will. He is connecting one wire from the short circuited nod to top of the yoke. Where the paint is removed. See, there will be a spark. Means normally, uh, even you are operating at one one pen volts. When there is a metallic collision between two particles, which is having current, normally it will give small little spark like this. Same procedure, similar. Okay, we cover, cover almost uh, everything. Mm, let's see. See, uh, we learned about DC motor and uh, everything. Okay, we should know the applications also. Means in real time. Okay, I have done everything. I know the resistance values and everything. But I should know where we are uh, actually using this. Uh, um, actually using these DC motors. You can see train tracks and everywhere. You can see these are applications. Means DC motors having uh, is more applications in real time. So we should know what they are actually up to. See why you are measuring all these uh, resistance values. There is no need. But we are uh, we are about to know what is the performance it will, be, it will give. Because if you know a DC motor, you should know okay how much efficiency it can uh, produce. Or uh, what is the uh, insulation resistance it has? Because it, it has to withhold the higher voltage also. Because you are operating at lab around 110 volts. If you are operating for more also, it can stand. Right? So you should know the things all these before while we are installing a machine in the laboratory. I will go. Okay. See, uh, this is for measuring the resistance of particle. Uh, this is the setup. See, for handbook, I want to uh, means you, you you guys please put down all these. Okay, you should project. You should uh, give me one handwritten uh, report of this experiment. So, you please you people please note down all these title, object, and circuit diagram and procedure. What you have done like that. Okay, up to this is sufficient because tables you can't prepare because now we 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 didn't do the experiment also. Obviously, you know the values. Okay, that's why you all people just write down all these points and also uh, rep reports they ask, but uh, I think now there is no chance because uh, we didn't do the experiment or you can't do the reports like that. So you write up to this point, okay, up to run four. What is the procedure is there? And also you see the videos also because if there is a chance that uh, you, you just go to the folder first, in this one lecture is about. The introduction and theoretical work and the procedure is about theoretical means what they have done in the lab okay so you please go through these two files because i also explained everything what is there in that file itself i didn't explain anything new so you please you people please go through these two folders so that you can get more idea about what the actual experiment is okay and this is it so, sir, from where we have to write the report I see. Yeah, I am telling you. Theory, theory is there. Theory one folder is there. You just go through the folder, and there is an instruction sheet. Okay. From that one, there is an experiment number two. Okay. Experiment number two, you you write up to this point. Run run four. Okay. Okay. Now, there is no need to write the reports because uh, these things we should do in real time, but nothing has done, so we can't draw like that. So you better uh, write up to run four. That is sufficient. Okay. And go through the videos because uh, if, if there is a chance that if they conduct in the hardware uh, hardware labs, then there is a problem, right? So you better prepare also. Means uh, you just see the videos and uh, know okay what they are doing exactly because uh, they are connecting so many wires. So if I expand also, it, it it wouldn't look good. 
because if you all people come to lab it is different but now i can explain this by going to there means what you understood okay that is different case so you people just watch the video if possible and also write the report okay uh, if you people have any doubts please uh, uh, so uh, should you have to draw the diagrams uh diagrams you draw what is there it is not a big deal right okay sir yeah. it is hmm. not a big deal. you just draw the diagrams because i uh, should know na right what you are exactly doing here because what is the see you people have any doubts ask me now no problem okay sir is there anything we have to do other than to uh, prepare the reports mm what what you just tell me i didn't catch what you said other than sir, report sir not mm. do you have to prepare any other thing other than report ah, no Then, no nothing is required only report is sufficient okay Yes, and uh, will there be any wipe or some sort of things? Ah, uh, what? Is there any? Sir, will there be any wipe? Ah, uh, wipe type. Of, see, I don't know about that. Uh, sorry, because uh, I am about to take the lab, but I don't know what is the exam procedure. But uh, as of now, uh, there is nothing required. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. you just write the report. That's it. That is sufficient. See, okay. let's see what will happen in the future. I don't know if it is virtual itself. There is no problem for you guys because you can. There is uh, nothing will be there in virtual. But if you are coming to lab, right? You should know uh, what is there means how to connect and everything there. Right? So you you just go through the video, so you can get the hundred percent knowledge. I am damn sure because there is nothing new to do here. Everything is done in that lab video itself. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, where will we write the report in A4 size paper or a practical notebook? Ah, uh, you write in A4 size paper. That is sufficient as of now. Okay, okay sir. Uh, sir. Diagram, sir. Did you uh, tell uh, to drop them or just skip them? I see you. Just you please them. rather what? What you are saying? Diagrams you want to skip? No, no, no. I, I just miss her. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hear what you said about the diagram. We have to uh, oh, no, no, no. draw them. Ah, draw it, draw it. What is there in there? You okay, just okay, draw the four, the four procedure diagram. That's it. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And on the left side, uh, something like that, or uh, on like a continuation of the whole uh, writing. Ah, you, you, you write it like a continuation. Okay. As of now, you write it like a continuation itself. Because okay, see, sir. different lab, different people are handling lab side. We don't know. what finally they want to take but for my case you just write a a4 sheet and you take the a4 sheet and you write down the uh, experimental procedure up to the run four okay you leave okay, this report sir. spot okay i will uh, i will just let you know if there is anything like report to be done later we will do in the real time case but as of now you write up to run four okay okay sir thank you okay sir got it that one three up to sir, the report two how up to sir how can you submit the assignment Yeah, assignment. See that thing is that any of you is, is there any possibility to come college because all people can. Uh, no, sir. The software copy. I am saying of the software copy means other teachers have some taken the software copy of the assignments. That's why okay, I am okay. saying that. Software copy. In, no, sorry, 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 soft copy, soft copy. Sorry, software copy. Mister. Uh, okay, no problem. For soft, soft copy, by through online they take the soft copy. Okay. I don't know this uh, till now because for me they my my what uh, my professor said that you just take that uh, handwritten report that's it see I don't know what is exactly what he want okay in, yeah, as of now you, you you people please write the handwritten report that's it okay no sir okay, I am saying that, that we will write the report no one people please one people uh, one by one okay Chandra should continue. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sir, one more. We'll one preparing one. the report and then we will submit as you will. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. See, you persons uh, means uh, complete this handwritten report first. Okay, you keep with yourself. When there is a possibility, I will collect. Okay, I am here itself, na. So someday, if any of uh, one person also can come and submit all those reports, right, to me directly. Sir, so we don't need to submit a soft copy to you on the mail. Okay, okay. If there is a possibility, you do that. That is better, I think. No, so after we will submit the soft copy via mail. Yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay. You do that. Is better. Send we submit it online. Yes, yes. That is better, I think. Yes, yes. Because he told yes. me to return hand report, but uh, it is better online. It is more better. Yes. So, sir, uh, we write the handwritten in handwritten mode and then submit the PDF to you via mail, sir. Yes, yes. That's yes. that. 
If you draw the diagrams, you may get idea. Okay, this is there like that. Okay. Sir, sir, okay. you told that. Hmm, tell me, tell me. No problem. See, you told that it, we na for now we don't have to make the reports, but later we may have. Means the class will be repeated once again in if there is a chance for offline. Maybe, maybe because the uh, as of now, see only you can uh, do the report up to uh, theoretically. Na reports are not done because. Uh, we don't do the any hardware case, so I, give me time, okay? I I just uh, I think there is uh, no chance of offline, maybe. So up to what level I expand you, we just write it, okay? Up to run for what procedure I expand you, we just uh, write it as a report, and you submit it to me. That is sufficient, okay? If there is anything extra needed, I I I inform you guys, okay? Okay, sir, got it, sir. Hmm. Ah, tell me. So in the instruction manual, it is written that the circuit diagram needs to be in one page. I mean, that the circuit diagram, the objective, and all that. So, sir, okay. if all the three circuit diagrams do not fit in one page, uh, then we'll use two pages. Okay, 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 no problem. We can use two pages also, no problem. Because if you are drawing, if it is, if the place is not sufficient, you can go for other. Okay, no problem. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So I just wanted to confirm. We'll do all of this in an A4 sheet, right? Ah, A4 sheet, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. You do it in A. See, you you write a handwritten report in the A4 sheet, and you draw the diagram, and you just send me the soft copy. That is sufficient. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, and sir, what about the attendance? The attendance, uh, there is. Uh, I think. You know, I think I had that. Uh, I, people are not. Uh, means uh, some professors are not taking attendance like that. I had. Is it like that? Because I talk to your teacher. Okay. Sir, I told you that some teachers are taking attendance, but not the all teachers. Like the <clears throat> our computer teacher is not taking attendance because of this pandemic situation yes, and yes, the online right. mode situation. Yes. Because yes. may somebody have no, a network the issue. What but sir, for the practical classes, the attendance is required, I guess, for the marking. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, okay. I don't know that exactly. Okay, see, if they, okay, I will collect the attendance from Tariq here then. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sir, I don't have any procedure to send you the attendance. How can you send? I don't know okay, how to okay, send. Okay, okay. No problem. No problem. You don't worry. Okay. How many people attended today? Seventy-three. Yes, sir. Seventy-three. Sir. Sir, I'll send you the attendance on WhatsApp. I have an extension to record it. Okay, okay, okay. You please do that then. Okay, okay that's fine, sir. Again, we'll send it. Okay, okay, okay. Is there anything more to guys? If you have any doubts or anything, you just ask me because this is not that a uh, difficult experiment because it is very simple only. Okay, you don't worry even if it is. a uh, hardware case also there is no difficulty if you follow those videos and also you just go through the matter what they are explained it is not that difficult okay okay there is no doubt right then no sir uh, okay okay sir okay. thank you sir okay okay then bye guys bye Okay, thank you for the class. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.